Kashinto Rapa Teleri Kapoto Skela Buskin. But they failed to remember that the master was not. In Brother Bosato Lolosian Galaba Baba 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 Shiri Dada Pushin Galaba E mama ma shuru tutski na ma 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 Inda la ma shira ba 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 ra ba skiri na ma santu loro dos kiri ma ba ra ba E ma ma rando skeli la ha na ma ma shira ma 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 E ra ma 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 kuri ha ra ma ma shundo lo 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 ba shira ma 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 Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Karaba ba shinto tolo ligi shoko ba ba be karada ba sando lolo zika. Ora mama mana mama shanda ba 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 shkoro do boske da mama mama shando lolo ski mama mama. Ora mama katos kele lele me kista la la kari da ba shira. Shindo lo 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 koro dos kiri da ba shira da ba da ba 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 shira. To have the steps leading up and to walk with the master all of the time. So when trials come, na ma ma kashi to lo lo ji ma 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 karada de la biske na ni ni mia. God bless you this morning. What a beautiful day that we that the Lord has made. Greetings to all of you who has come up this early hour to worship the Lord. Glory be to God. God bless you, Sasha. Mary Ann Vandenberg, God bless you. It's going to be a great morning for all of us today. Why should we worry? Why should we fear? The same Jesus is always there for us. We need to call upon His name. Give him praise and worship the Lord, Pamela, all of you, give him praise, Pamela Subia, Shendel Mail, give him worship as you call upon his name, why should you fear? Why should you fear this morning? Desirin Marahaj, call upon his name. Lena Chetty, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you this morning. Father Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, I just want to bless your beautiful name this morning. This is a great day that you have made. Lord, as we worship your name this morning, <laughs> I pray that you pour out your grace upon your children today. I bless all of you today and I release the grace of God upon all of you today. The same Jesus. Oh, God bless you, Dudu. God bless you. Regina, you are blessed. Joanne Suje, it's a great morning, all of you. 
is a time for us to pour out our heart and worship the Lord. Nere babu babu baba kashanga rama mama kuria la baba babu skeri na mama mama. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father Lord, we worship you, Lord. Father Lord, we thank you, O God. E talarada baba shete le grebe koto po 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 po. God bless you, Shene. The hands of the Lord is upon all of you this morning, as you all has just come forth. I see the glory of God today is going to pour upon all of us. The anointing of the Lord is here today. Oh, just worship the Lord, people of God. Why should we worry? Why should we fear people of God? The same Jesus. Mama la mashara ba 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 kara ba ba shekere de beke shekere beke de ela baskere bila buske mia leje jebe de keskolo ba 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 till every storm passes by in the name of Jesus just worship with the Lord with me with this song as you meditate upon this song until every storm passes by. People of God, why should we worry and why should we fear? Oh, Shina, Mama, 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 just bless the Lord because He's always dear for us. Call upon His name till the storm passes by. His name, oh, la Mama, Mama, Shina, Mama. Passes by till the storm passes by. We will continue to call his name. <laughs> he is ever there with us. Glory be to God. Mama Mashakolo Ziza Babaranto Posika Busalila Janda. Glory be to God. This is a beautiful Sunday that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is a beautiful day. Wherever you are today, just open your heart and know that the storm is going to pass by. Just call on the name of Jesus and you know that he is there always for us. Why should you worry and why should we fear? Oh my God, we have a great God that we serve, that we serve. Glory be to God. I sense a great anointing this morning, church. I am here today to say I release the anointing of God upon all of you wherever you are listening to the voice. To my voice this morning, I release a special anointing. I release a special grace of God upon you that the Lord open up your spirit to hear the voice of God today in the matter name of Jesus. I stand today and I declare that the anointing of God will touch you today and increase you and build up your spiritual life. Today, in the matter name of Jesus, I release this special anointing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for hearing me this morning in Jesus' name as we pray. Today, I bring greetings to you from Jesus House Ministries, Durban, South Africa. God bless you as we've come together this morning to hear the word of the Lord. I want every one of you to tell your neighbor, get ready. God is about to speak to you. God is about to bless you. This great morning, I would just like to start before we go into the word of God. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. Today, I want to start this service this morning by saluting a great general, a great general in the kingdom of God. Apostle Dr. Maurice Sorolo, my spiritual father, who has fought the good fight of faith and has kept the faith, and today has passed on. Yesterday we woke up with the news, got a call. He's passed on to glory to be 
with the Lord that one day all of us will fight the same fight of faith and keep the faith and we will all meet at Jesus' feet one day. But he has left a great legacy, a mighty legacy. He's touched millions of souls. I've touched millions of souls across the nations of the world. Have raised army for the Lord. Strong, victorious army across the nations of this world. Which I am one of those soldiers that he has raised. Out of the millions of soldiers that he has raised worldwide. I am one of them that he has personally touched personally anointed and has raised me today and I salute him this morning for his great grace that the Lord has given unto him even as he's gone to glory. I stand today to say I salute and honor him this morning. He has greatly impacted my life for many decades now and for many years, for more than eight years, I have been every January with Dr. Maurice Cirolo, travel all the way from South Africa for the past almost 10 years now, going to sit on his feet. I have been following my spiritual father for, 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 for many decades, for over two decades. I have been following him steadfastly. He has ministered to me. I've attended school of ministries. God has used him mightily to impact my life. And I've been in America under his feet every January. For many years, I will sit with him, hear his word from his feet, listen to his word, impact into my life every year. As many of you know, Jesus' house, you know every, every January, I go and spend at least a week there receiving the word of God, hearing and increasing myself. Today, I'm so glad that many soldiers that he has raised are successful all across the nations of the world, impacting millions and millions of people. May the Lord bless him. May the Lord continue to increase him and increase the work that he has left behind. And we pray for Mama Teresa Cirolo that the Lord God Almighty will strengthen Mama Teresa and also strengthen the entire team of the MCWE, that God will continue to use the Legacy Center to impact people and all the great teachings of Dr. Maurice Cirolo will continue to impact generation and generation to come. May the Lord continue to bless his work in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I am blessed and I feel greatly blessed this morning. And I want to briefly encourage us in the word. I want us to open to Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah chapter 3. The book of Nehemiah chapter 3. You see, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 3, I would like to read from verse 1. I thank all of you who are just sending great message, Anif Shapravda, all of you wishing Dr. Maurice Sorolo, uh, family and ministry, great prayers. Thank all of you and wishing all of us strength at this time. Rejoicing in the spirit, but in the flesh, we could miss our papa. And I personally missed him for his great impact upon my life. But today, God wants to speak to us. God bless you all. If you look at Je Nehemiah chapter 3, and I'm going to read Nehemiah chapter 3 from verse 1. The Bible said, then, Elishab, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priest, and they builded the sheep gates. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it, even unto the Torah of Mea. They sanctified unto the Torah of Hanel. Glory be to God. Amen. 
There's something that I want us to look at here. The Bible say, Elisha, the high priest rose up with his brethren, the priest. And they built at the ship gate and sanctified it. One thing that I want us to recognize here this morning, I want us to understand when Nehemiah came back to Jerusalem, one of the first things Nehemiah did, the Bible say he began to rebuild the gates. One of the first things this great man Nehemiah did after he came to Jerusalem, the first thing he did, I want you to understand that. The first thing he did was that he began to rebuild the gates of the house of the Lord that lay down in Reun. The first thing he set his hand to begin to achieve was to rebuild the gates. And the first gate that was rebuilt was rebuilt was called a sheep gate and was built by the priest, the high priest, and called upon the other brethren and who are priests. And they build this gate and they sanctify this gate. So when I look into these gates that was rebuilt, and I want us to see today what are the significant of this word sheep gate? Because the Bible say to us that the first gate, because all these gates, they all have names. And I begin to look into those words. The first gate that was rebuilt was the sheep gate. Was the sheep gate. And now, what do we understand by the word sheep gate? The sheep gate represent our spiritual life. You know, the Bible said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. When I look at the first thing that was dealt with was the sheep gate. The first and the most important thing in our life is our spiritual life. Rebuilding our spiritual life that is broken down. That is the most greatest uh, thing that the Lord is asking us to do. It is the greatest part of the building our spiritual life, not the physical that we can see. So when the Bible talks about sheep, the Bible is talking about spiritual life. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. God looks at us and calls us our sh his sheep. And he is our shepherd. He is the sh he's our shepherd. No wonder the psalmist say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, God is busy speaking to us about Nehemiah's looking at the importance and when I look into it, where you will understand the importance, this sheep gate was only handled and built by the priest. Look at your word. Look at the scripture. The Bible says, Elihab, the high priest, rose up with the brethren, the priest, with the brethren, the priest. The gates that the priest themselves lift up together and they build and sanctify. So our spiritual life is builded by the men of God, by the priest. Oh my God. So the priest rose up. They know the very important gates that needed to be taught in our life. If everything must be addressed first in our life, is our spiritual life before every other thing could be taught. And that is why the priest rebuild the gate, the sheep gate that represent our spiritual life that has been broken down. The first thing you must do for you to experience revival, blessing and increase in our life is for you to build up your sheep gate. Your sheep gate is your spiritual life. Today I'm talking about your spiritual life. I'm talking about your core. I'm talking about your depths. 
I'm talking about that aspect of your spirit, of your life that is so important that if you don't take care of your spiritual life, that is where every good things and perfect gift emanates from. If you truly want to see peace and see the hand of God and see the blessings of God and see the glory of God, the first thing you must do, like what Nehemiah did, the first thing was that he, the sheep gates is, was rebuilt and sanctified and handled by priests, men of God, your pastors, the people that God has put in your life. Just like God put Dr. Sorolo in my life that built my spiritual life, that spoke into my life for decades, that ministered unto me, blessed me, attended his school, laid hands upon me, impacted the world upon me even while I was a teenager. My God. Rebuilding my ship gate. Because without your ship gate being built up, there is no way you can become a blessing. The only way for you to become a blessing is when your sheep gate is taken care of. Today I have a word for us. How is your sheep gate? I have told you the sheep gate represents our spiritual life. How is your spiritual life? Is your spiritual life real? Like Nehemiah saw the house of God and he was boarding and the house of the Lord was real. And he had the great burden to rebuild the house of the Lord. And the first thing to do is your spiritual house. Is your life today in real? Let me tell you, church, the reason why we see a lot of reals and a lot of things not in all that are going zigzag and going differently is that we try to build and live in the first thing. We try to build, but leaving out the most important, the first thing, we're leaving out the ship gate. And when the ship gate is left out, whatsoever we build, we are building on a sanding. We are laying a foundation on a, on a sanding soil that is not a very strong foundation that is going to crumble. Many people say, Lord, I want to grow. Many people say, Lord, I bless, bless me and establish me. It is so difficult to become established and become a blessing if your ship gate is not taken care of. You want to be a blessing? You want to leave a legacy? You want to leave a perfect legacy? Then look into your ship gate, your spiritual life. That is the only way you can rebuild. You can impact people. You can become a blessing to many nations and to many people. The reason why many people aren't living great legacy today is because they neglect their sheep gate. You can never become a blessing without looking after your sheep gate and making sure your sheep gate is built. So it was the first thing that was taken care of by the priest. And Elisha called the other brethren. They build a gate. They sanctify the gate. That is the work of the man of God, of the priest and the prophet. So the only way for you to build up your spiritual life, your gate, is by the man of God. That God has placed in your life. Those men will build this in your life. No wonder the Bible says, forsake not the assemblies of the children of God. The gathering of the fellowship of the children of God. You should not forsake it. Why? Because we receive spiritual food from the servant of God that God God has called to impact us with the word of God. We must not depart from it. Let me tell you, God has called people differently, anointed them and commissioned people with gift. The Bible says some he has called as prophet, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. Oh my God. Some teachers of the word. Oh, apostles for the perfecting of the saint to build us up, to edify us, and to perfect us. So people of God, consider this very, very important in your life. So the first thing that is more important in your life, people of God, is your spiritual life. What did the Bible say in the book of Matthew chapter 6? 
the first thing that was attacked. Matthew chapter 6. If somebody opened to the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, you'll see what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse number 33. Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to read. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto thee. The Bible say here, but seek ye first. Matthew 6, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And that is the scripture here. And that is when Nehemiah knew something. This was a time. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. I am here is to share with us today that whatsoever we seek, the first thing we shall seek first is the kingdom of God, which is our spiritual life. It says, seek ye first in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. How do you seek the kingdom of God? The only way for you to seek the kingdom of God first is for you to talk about your sheep gate. The gate. Gate is an entrance. Hallelujah. It's a very great entrance. A lot of things happen in the city gate. A lot of things happen in a gate. Oh, is a gate with the entrance of into any place, into any city. Is a gate. A lot of business and important things transpired in the gate. A lot of blessing happened in the gate. And the Bible says, seek you first in the gate. Before any other thing, seek you first the kingdom of God. So the gate is an entrance into our, into our life. Just like a gate serves as an entrance into a city. Let me tell you, when your spiritual life, which is a gate... When you seek you first the kingdom of God and you build that gate nicely with the word of God, things will happen. And that is why today I want to tell you many people are seeking other things instead of seeking the first thing. First thing first. They are not seeking God first, but they want the other things first. So the Lord is saying as you seek him, all things will be added to you in Jesus name. So today, I truly want us to understand this. And I want to buttress this point with a word. That many of us are saying, God bless me. God release things into my life. God increase me. I need prosperity. Lord, I need to buy houses. I need to take care of my family. I need this material blessing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But God is saying you must take care of your fish of your of your sheep gate first. Now let us look into Nehemiah and let us understand what he says in Nehemiah chapter 3. Because today we're looking into the life of what Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, and let us understand something quickly there. I want us to understand something, chapter 3, because we're reading Nehemiah chapter 3. I want us to look into it. I want us to see the second gate that Nehemiah built. I want us to see the second gate. Nehemiah chapter 3. Glory be to God. I read now. People of God. And the Bible say in verse 2. We've read verse 1. That the Bible say in verse 1. He took care of the priests. The, the, those that handle the building of the ship gate. We are exclusively priests. They are the one that took care of that. So it's very important for you to understand that your spiritual life needs to be nourished. But verse 2 says, And next unto him builded the men of Jericho. The next to them builded Zaka, the son of Imre. But the Bible says in verse 3, the Bible says, But the sheep gate did the son of Hesh. Has Benash built, who also lay the beam thereof and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. Glory be to God. Verse 3 say, But the sheep gave that the son of Hasitna they built it, the sheep, the, the fish gate. The Bible is talking about the fish gate here. In verse 3, but the fish gate. The first gate that was built, the Bible talks about the sheep. The second gate now we can see here in verse 3, 
was being built by the sons of Hashnah. The Bible said, build who laid the bee. The Bible said, but the fish gate they built. Now, what do we understand by the word, the sheep gate, the fish gate, sorry, please, today, the fish gate. What do we understand by that? What does the, the fish gate represent? The first one was sheep. The second one was fish. Now, what is the fish gate represent? I want to say to us today, people of God, I want you to look at it. The first gate we must rebuild is our spiritual life, which is the sheep gate. And the second we will rebuild is the fish gate, which represent economic gate, economic gate, prosperity, economic gate, prosperity. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other things shall be added unto you. When you build your spiritual life, the second gate is every other things and all these things shall follow, shall be added unto you. The economic gate, because the Bible talks about the fish gate, which the fish gate represent prosperity. It represents economic gate. Today, I want you to understand something. Before you see the gates of economy, the economic gate being opened and not shut before thee, the first important gate, which is your spiritual life, which is the the, the sheep gate, that gate must be built and taken care of. And just like the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added unto you. Let me tell you that is the spiritual gate. The second economic gate will be open. What gives open doors and bring the second gate to open in our life? Today I prophesy and I speak to somebody in the name of Jesus that our economic gate will be open to us in our life in the name of Jesus that our economic gate will not be closed by the reason of shutting down our sheep gate. Many want to open the economic gates and shutting the sheep gate, which is the spiritual gate. I prophesy to you today. Oh, Shandalama, Sandamama. It is time for you and I to come close to God. It is time for you and I to rebuild our spiritual life and realize that this is the time of revival. This is the time to love the Lord for God and serve Him and every other thing and seek the things of the kingdom. And as we seek the things of the kingdom, the open door that we are looking for, the economic gate that was closed by the reason of closing the spiritual gate, our prophet sight to you today. Try God and see if he will not open the windows of heaven and pour out his blessing upon thee. I proclaim and I speak to somebody today. Your sheep gate will be open. Open it up and you will see what the Lord will do for you. Oh my God. The first gate determines what happened. Whether the second gate will open. God is interested in our prosperity, the God that we serve is a God of all sufficient God. And he is not the God of insufficiency. He is a God that will release a gate, an economic gate open to us today. And I hear the spirit of the Lord woke me up this morning and he said, church, take the church to rebuild their sheep gate. He said, I am about to open a massive economic gate upon the body of Christ, that the body of Christ will experience a great opening of a mighty door, a mighty gate, an economic gate is going to be open to the children of Zion. We will experience this massive gate. But the Lord is saying, first, take care of your spiritual gates. Ho, ho, ho. Take care of your spiritual life. Try him and see something is about to happen. He is a God 
of all sufficiency. He is interested in our prosperity. That is why the Bible says in the book of Ted John. Ted John somebody. Ted John 1 verse 2. The book of Ted John says something. Oh my God. Ted John say, I wish thou prospered even as thy soul prospered. I want you to look at it. Ted John, somebody. Glory be to God. If you look into your Bible and you open to Ted John, glory be to God. Lord of the Vagretos Kelima, Membre de Bigelo de Gila. Because if you look at Ted John, the Bible said, Beloved, I, uh, verse 2, Ted John. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Glory be to God. Even as thy soul prospereth. Even as thy soul prospereth. Even as thy spirit prospereth. So the prosperity of your spirit start from rebuilding the ship gate opening just like Nehemiah started with the sheep gate, the most important gate before the building of the house of God. What must be taught first? You consider yourself as God building. For the Bible says, we are the temple of the Lord. That is why the Bible says, define not this temple. The temple you are the building. But this building that we are in has a gate. And the gate to this your vessel, to this your temple, the first gate that is so important that you must touch in your life is the gate that is called the spiritual gate. And after that, the other gate that is so important to fulfilling your assignment, to fulfilling your plan is the economic gate. Because when that gate is not open, it is difficult for you to fulfill your purpose. It is difficult for you to fulfill God's vision and plan because you need the economic gate to carry out your assignment. May I prophesy upon somebody today, you are crying to God and saying, I'm not living my purpose and I'm not fulfilling God's vision and plan and purpose in my life. May I speak to somebody today, most of your purpose and assignment needs economic gates to be opened to carry it out. You need economic revival in order for you to go forward. May I speak to somebody today. May somebody listen to the word of God today. Seek you force take care of the gate and that is why Nehemiah moved by divine revelation Nehemiah understood that the most important thing in life must be taken care of and Nehemiah said I want to say to you it is not all about the building I want to rebuild this building and God has put it in my life but there is a great body in my spirit that we must take care of our spiritual life. And I must show them. So that was a type and shadow of what we must do. And that spiritual door was taken care of. Now look at Ted John chapter 1 verse 2 say, I wish thou prospered even as thy soul, even as thy soul, even as thy soul prospered. So listen, he didn't leave the soul, the spirit out. He said, even as thy soul prospered, so the prosperity of your soul determines the gates that will open. Today we want to open economic gate. I sense the spirit of God, the body of Christ is going into another level of fulfilling our assignment. I release that great assignment into your life in the matter name of Jesus. Somebody today I prophesy and I decree, let me tell you, without grace, without economic door opening, you cannot fulfill your assignment. Seek you first the kingdom of God. Seek your force, the kingdom of God. Oh, if there is anything you will go home with today, tell your neighbor, give him high five and say, brother, seek your force, the kingdom of God, and every other thing shall be added unto thee. Glory be to God. We're going to look into that Nehemiah again. And we're going to look at the third gate. I look into the whole thing that every gate represents something significant. That there's something for you and I to learn. 
But today I'm praying that you, every one of us, will find a good fight of faith. Like Papa Cyril. Oh my God. That today he obeyed God's own vision and plan. He lived the plan. But God gave him. Open the economic gates for Pepper Cerolo to be able to go to the nations of the world. Because without the economic gate being opened, how will he has fly and achieve all these without economic gate? Prosperity is important. But we have to open that prosperity door. The key to open the door is our soul. Is feeding and taking care and rebuilding the sheep gate. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Manjala Kari. I have seen that the body of Christ so much have neglected their spiritual life. Neglected rebuilding the sheep gate. And they have focused their own attention. And so much attention on the economic gate. And they fail to understand that that gate don't open. Until you open the first gate. It is sequence. When you don't open the first gate and take care of the first gate and build the first gate, the second gate ain't going to open. But the church has failed to understand that and have concentrated so much on the second gate, which is the economic gate, which is the fish gate. You remember one time Jesus told somebody to throw his hook into the water and when he was looking for money, and Jesus said to him, put your, the first fish that will come out. He said, open the fish and take out the there is, and then open it up. And he opened it up and found money taken out from the fish to pay out, to pay his own dues that he ought to pay. The fish, fish represent economic gate. Oh my God, prosperity. Today, if there is one gate that God said, open upon the church. Is this powerful gate that we're going to pray that is attached to our assignment? That every one of us here today on earth, we have an assignment that is given to us. I have been taking the gospel to the nations of the world, to Europe, to America, to Africa. There was no way I'm able to take the word to all these places that I've gone to preach. That I've gone to take the word. It needs money. It needs economic gate to be open but i cannot open that gate first without building up my spiritual life that is what will make me a blessing you can never be a blessing without building up your spiritual gate that is called your ship gate Today, I have a great body. I have a great body like Nehemiah that the body of Christ and the church of God must understand the importance of our spiritual life, not neglecting our prayer life, not neglecting our Bible study life, not neglecting our, our life because when we eat this faith food, this spiritual food, we become righteous. We become like God. We live holy and righteous, not neglecting all these aspects of our life. When we neglect our spiritual life brothers and sisters we are going to grow and when you don't grow you don't see the glory of God oh somebody today will experience no wonder the Bible talk about from glory to glory faith to faith how do you move to glory to glory is by taking care and building your sheep gate taking care of your sheep gate Understanding the place of prayer, Bible study, living right, full of God's presence in your life. Because when you study and eat the word of God, you become like God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You eat more of God. You take more of his word. You become more like God. The only way for you to be righteous and be holy is where you have enough of the word of God in the inside of you that have gained entrance into your life. Then they began to make impact. When the word bears and takes root in our life, then our soul begins to prosper. Then we will prosper and be in good health. Because to, for you to experience good health, you need the word of God. He said, I wish thou prospered and be in good health. Even as thy soul prospered. You need the word of God to be in good health. Good health. You need his word. 
And how do you need his word? By studying, meditating in this word. Joshua said, this book of the law will not depart out of my mouth. He said, but we will meditate on this book of the law day in and night. He said, by this, we will make our ways prosperous. You must meditate on this word and do not allow it to depart from your mouth. Do you truly stand to meditate on this word? By this, we shall make our way prosperous and have good success. Oh my God. When you meditate on the word of God, the word of God becomes impactful. No wonder the Bible said the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Light means power. When you meditate on the word of God, the word of God moves from the, uh, just from the written into a revelation or into a logos word. And it becomes impactful. When the word of God becomes meaningful to you, it moves and then touch your spirit. It takes roots and you understand the depths of the meaning. Grabs the word in your inner man. You take care of your inner man, which is your spirit. Oh my God, oh my God, I see God moving today. Now, in Jesus' name, we have an assignment. Can we look at our Bible, Nehemiah chapter 3? I want us to look into around verse number 13. No time for us to keep reading all the scriptures, but you can read it at home. The Bible say about another gate. The Bible talks about 13, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse number 13. The Bible talks about the number three gate here that was taken care of. He talks about, in verse 13, he said, The valley gate repaired Hanin, and the inhabitants of Zona, they built it, and set up the doors thereof, and locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and a thousand cubit on the wall unto the dawn gate. The Bible talks about the three gates here. The third one was the valley gate. Oh my God. The valley gate. There is a gate that the Bible called the valley gate. One of the gate Nehemiah built was the valley gate. And I have come to discover church that one of Satan's greatest weapon is the spirit of discouragement. One of, the, one of Satan's greatest weapon is the spirit of discouragement. The spirit of the valley. Not the spirit of the mountaintop. The spirit of the valley. One of devil's greatest weapon is the spirit of discouragement. The devil uses it a lot. And now I could see. Oh, Shandala Shandala Mashiach. Every one of us will give up ourselves up today when there are great challenges coming against us, pressures coming against us. What do you feel? Because in this journey, in this our assignment, what this man wants us to understand the importance of all the representation of this gate, the prosperity gate, the economic gate, the spiritual gate, the sheep, the fish. And now the valley, what God is saying to us is that the pressure of life will come. The challenges and this discouragement will come. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6, you will discover that a man called David experienced this discouragement. In 1 Samuel, Jesus experienced the same discouragement even at the garden of Gethsemane. Everybody must experience this season. But what do we do? The devil used this. He rebuilt the gate. He rebuilt the valley gate. So that those gates will serve as a testimony. And God will make us to understand something deep. Mandala Makashia. For us to know that trials and temptation can become a testimony. So the valley gate represent that was rebuilt is to tell us church the body of christ today that trials and temptation valley can become a testimony that when we see the valley 
He is a God of the mountaintop and the God of the valley that he will also be with us in the valley. Today, I am here to tell us something. I am here to share revelation to us. No wonder a portion of the scripture says, count it all joy when thou falleth into diverse temptation. Oh, Kamamaya, for the testing of your faith, walk it out perseverance. That something powerful comes out from the perseverance of your faith. But God is saying to you and I, in this journey, a time of discouragement will come. So there is a symbolic sign of rebuilding the valley gate to speak to us that is trials, challenges, discouragement, valley experience can be a testimony and that God is saying to us in this our journey, while we journey up, a time will come that we will also go into the valley. And when we go into the valley, we will come out of the valley and the valley will become a testimony. He is a God that will see us through. No wonder the psalmist say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, there is a time in your life that you will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He is a God of the valley that will be with you. That when you are in Christ, serving the Lord, when your sheep gate is built and your fish gate is open, now I want to say to you, people of God, that you will also experience the valley gate. I don't know whether you are in the valley gate. I want to say to you right now that we serve a God of miracle, that the God of the valley is with you. That same God will take care of you. That same God that took care of Samuel. When I look into the book of Samuel, chapter 30, somebody look at that book of Samuel. Mambala Shepra de Getosa, first Samuel 30, verse 6. Oh, Grebetos Kilamanja, first Samuel 30, verse 6. Zoboshkere Baskaranina. I just want to read it. Verse number six. Verse number six. The Bible says, And David was greatly distressed. This was David, the great man of God. He was greatly dis distressed. For the people speak of stoning him because the soul of all the people, <laughs> the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I love that word. You can underline that word. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Today you will encourage yourself in the Lord. The time will come. I see somebody rebuilding every valley gate that have come into your life. God is doing something powerful. You're going to stand and rebuild that gate in your life. The Bible say, and David, oh my God, David, the man of God, the Bible make me to understand after they invaded uh, his camp in Zigla, after that great invasion, the Bible say something happened and the people began to blame him and everybody was not happy. But thank God, a time of the valley, a time of the discouragement. Now the devil want to use the weapon of discouragement, but David refused and closed the door. I prophesy today, you will rebuild, you will rebuild every valley gates in your life. In the name of Jesus, every valley gates in your life will be rebuilt in the name of Jesus, I prophesy. And David encouraged himself in the Lord, the way to rebuild your valley gate and to tell you that trials can turn into testimony because those valley gates are discouragement and weapon of the devil that will come on the way. But the way for you to overcome it is to now encourage yourself in the Lord. I have something to say to somebody today in this valley gate that will come. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You can write that down. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Oh my God. When I look at that word, encourage yourself in the Lord. I'm beginning to look at it. Oh my God. No wonder the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8, if you look at Nehemiah chapter 8, the B part of it say the joy of the verse 10. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Say the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
Because when the joy of the Lord is gone, our strength is gone. When I look at that word, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What is the full meaning of that that Nehemiah said? The joy of the Lord is my strength. What is the meaning of that? I tell you, if you look at that word, the joy of the Lord is my strength, I want to tell you the full meaning here, what Nehemiah implies here, and the meaning of this is the joy, joy that settle, this joy of the Lord settle and is a settled assurance that God is in control. What he's saying is a settled assurance. That God is in control, in charge of all my life and situation is a total confidence. Hallelujah. Is a total confidence in him that he is in control. That ultimately everything is going to be all right. Having your trust rooted in him. Completely reliance and taking a position, choosing a position of praise in every situation, whether good or bad, choosing a situation, a position of praise, of thanksgiving in every time. The joy of the Lord is my strength, total reliance. Confidence in the Lord that God is in control. This joy comes from the innermost being. Oh my God. Oh my God. I look into this word. The Greek word for joy means chara. And when I look at that word chara, chara is a joy that is deeper than happiness. It is rooted only in God. And that is what Nehemiah is saying. You will only experience chara when you rebuild your sheep gate. When you know God, chara comes from your core, from your innermost being, from your depths. A joy that is deeper than mere happiness. It is only rooted in God. You experience it through God when you know God. That is why he say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, rooted. It is more than just, oh, Shetrevina Mashandala Makashia. It comes from Him. This joy comes from the Lord. It is a happiness that is not just a happiness that comes, that is quality, a happiness that is a human happiness that just lasts for a moment. But this happiness comes from our innermost being, rooted in God. Rooted in God. Today, I say to somebody, Nambra da Takita Balakrada, Embra Namakashia, this joy, it is stable. In us, it is not the worldly happiness. The worldly happiness will only last for some time and for some moment. I want to pray with us today. And I want to say to us today, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Today, I feel led to encourage every one of us. I feel led to encourage every one of us that these three doors that I have just shared with us here today, Mambando lo sikra batu zelandre de kisa la banje la kaya, that these three doors, this sheep gate, fish gate, and valley gate is very important in our life. It's very important in our life. The last scripture I'm going to take is Psalm 84, verse 6. Psalm 84, verse 6. Then we will pray. Can we go to the book of Psalm 84? The book of Psalms 84. Bela Gredo Sanda La Masanda. Psalm 84. And I'm going to read verse number 6. The book of Psalm 84. I feel like praying. I feel the fire of God here. And I want us to look. The Bible says, Who passing through the valley of Baca? Make it a well. The rain also fell at the fill at the pools. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well? Who passing through the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, make it a well? Today I declare and I decree: You will make every Baca 
that means we weeping every valley you will make it a well in the mighty name of Jesus, every discouragement, you will make it a well by encouraging yourself in the Lord. He said, who through passing the valley of Baca, you will pass through the valley of Baca, you will not remain there, but I prophesy, through encouraging yourself in the Lord, you will make every back valley of Baca a well. May I prophesy, I declare into your life today that every valley of weeping, every valley of Baca in your life, Turn into a well. Make it into a well. In the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy the hand of God. The grace of God upon your life. And I say receive this anointing. In the name of Jesus we pray. Nangala shekere de saroto popopo. Ingredosa dalamba to sikababa shandala masondo lobo. Somebody receive the anointing of the Lord. I command every baka, every baka, every baka turn into a well. Every valley in your life turn into a well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Zarina toponde le karia. I release fire. I release the anointing. I command victory upon your life. I turn every weeping, every sorrow into joy in the name of Jesus. I command all of you to stand up and encourage yourself in the Lord by holding on to the word of the Lord, by seeking the face of the Lord. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord in the book of 1 Samuel that we saw. Oh my God, when I look into that scripture, 1 Samuel 30 verse 6, David encouraged himself in the law. Today, stand up and encourage yourself in the law. Mandala I command every baka to turn into a well in the name of Jesus, overflowing well in the name of Jesus. Mampala Gorina Mama Shambala Koria La Masia. Today I release breakthrough. Signs and wonders into your life. Today we want to rebuild our spiritual life, our sheep gate. May you pray with me. Most of you, you heard my voice today. And you want to say, man of God, I want to make myself right with God on this day. Lord, help me to rebuild my sheep gate. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and every other thing shall be added. Somebody want to say with me now, Lord, come into my life. Uh, the first thing for you to do to rebuild your sheep gate is for you to know the Lord and accept him. May you say this prayer after me if you want to make amen. Make right with God. Can you say, Lord Jesus? I surrender all to you. I come to you this hour. I give my life to you. And I say, forgive me my sins. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Make me whole. And give me the power to live a Christian life. Today I'm born again. Write my name, O oh Lord, in the book of life. I am saved by faith. Now your child, in Jesus' name, we pray. The Lord has answered you. Jesus has come into your life. You've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. God has touched you this moment and heaven is rejoicing because a new soul has been won today. Today I prophesied and I say the hand of God come upon you and make you whole. In Jesus' name, I pray. Anybody trusting God for healing, I command healing to come upon you. Anybody trusting God for a miracle this morning, I command miracle to come upon you. I release special anointing. I release special grace of God upon you. I soak you all in the blood of Jesus. What are you expecting from God today? I hear the Spirit of God say to me, it is time to receive your miracle. It is time. The Bible says, whatsoever two or three of us shall agree here on earth, it shall be done. I agree with you. I believe in healing. I believe in miracle. I believe in signs and wonder. And miracles are real. Hebrews 13, 8 say, 
Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I prayed for some of you last week, and I know some of you got your testimony already. If you know God has blessed you, you've been healed, or you received your testimony, you can type your testimony on the comment place that I can see it and give God glorify and glorify the name of the Lord. It's an hour of miracle. I hear the heaven say to me, it is an hour of power. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke every infirmity. I rebuke every spirit of confusion and darkness in the life of people. And I prophesy this moment, receive your miracle. Receive your deliverance. I break the chains of darkness over your life. I prophesy the hand of God upon you this hour. I crush every chains of darkness. And I say receive your miracle. Receive miracle for your child. Miracle for your son. Miracle for your people. In Jesus name I pray. And soak in the lamb blood of Jesus. Rena masanda la coria la masanda la macoria la masaya. Ne ponde le curia la masaya. E carababa sheri macoria. E bromo mohondo lo sacahima. E grebe bohola minto popaya. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Memba la coria lama. I see seven people receiving a special torch. I see seven people in my vision receiving a miracle. You with a knee condition, I see you terribly battling with a knee condition. You had an operation before on your kneecap. It's a kneecap issue and you are under an excruciating pain. I see you right now in the name of Jesus. I am asking God to perform a miracle and receive your breakthrough up in on your knee. I speak to your knee and I command a new knee cup. I prophesy a miracle. You will walk again in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. If somebody, God is touching your leg. The doctor say you got an issue called, is it thrombosis or what did they call it? The bloods are clotting in your leg and you're finding it hard to work. I see God healing that leg. You are rising up from your feet. Jump up right now wherever you are. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. I command the power of God to hit you now. Be man whole in the name of Jesus. You are healed from this infirmity. There's another person the Lord showed to me. You're among the seven people that are just getting healed. You say autoimmune disease. I declare and I decree. That is what you've been diagnosed of. I prophesy healing power of God to take away that disease. Straight forth your head and type amen. Be healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in the name of Jesus. I see that healing power. There is a flow of God healing. There is a flow of God miracle power. I speak to you. Receive your healing, Sandra. Receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Receive it. This ring, never had receive it. I see it's a moment of healing and miracle. God is saying to me, those that believe this by faith, you're going to see wherever you are right now, miracle is taking place in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. You're battling with that sugar problem. Toss up the spirit of the Lord. I see somebody right now. You're battling with sugar. I command miracle. I command healing. Just stretch forth your hand. Just stretch forth your hand. Just stretch forth your hand. Power be healed. In the name of Jesus. There is a special burden upon me. That baby will not die. I see a little baby battling with life. 
And you are looking at me today, the mother of this child, stretch forth your hand. I speak life to your baby, to your child, and I say your baby battling with bread will not die in the name of Jesus. I speak life and the resurrection power in the name of Jesus. Your child received miracle now. Be healed. Let there be a sudden miracle at the sound of my voice. I release special healing and miracle upon that. Yes, I hear the Lord say your child is healed. Your child will live to declare the goodness of God. That baby has received miracle. Le gredo vo sanda la curia la basando lo cadi la la curia. E bredo vo cula le catunda la masanda la caria. There are two people battling with anxiety, depression. Right now, you sometimes just wake up and walk out of the house. I rebuke that spirit of depression. I rebuke that spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. And those, I'm praying for restoration of jobs. You've lost your job. You've lost your job. Stretch forth your hand. I'm asking for restoration of job. I'm asking for new release of job. I'm asking for new business. I'm asking for new business. You've lost your businesses. You've lost your business. You've lost your job. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking for a new door. I'm asking for a new door. I'm asking for a new door. I'm asking for a restoration. In Jesus' name, if you believe God with me, receive your miracle and shout amen and type amen. I say open doors, new opportunity, new opportunity. Power in the name of Jesus. Receive this miracle. Bangala la kuria la mashende rege de kishapula la garia. Receive this in the name of Jesus. I pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And any one of you trusting God for any miracle, stretch forth your hand. I decree as you type Amen. Whatsoever you trust in God for, I agree with you as you type Amen. As you type Amen. As you type Amen. Re be blessed. Matter at Jesus be blessed. Receive your breakthrough. I agree with you people now. As you type Amen. Tilda Mona, Amen. I agree with you. Receive it. Sylvia January, I agree with you. Receive it. Anisha Pravda, receive your miracle. Amen. Pamela Subia, receive yours in Jesus' name. Eugene Susma, receive yours in the name of Jesus. Dial, as you type, amen, receive yours. Neil Chetty, amen, I agree with you. As I call your name, Michelle Chetty, receive your own in the name of Jesus. Lynette Singh, receive. Dedica Labusa, JC Rady, open heaven for you. Tembi, receive your own. Makosa, Tembi, receive it. Eratosila Makashia. Kim Govinda, receive. Amen. Kunandi Pikwa and the entire family, receive yours as you type. Amen. Sylvia, amen. Receive it in Jesus' name. Mangra Dadia. Yes. Re employment for Erika, receive it. Regina, amen. Santiago, amen. Ruve David from Australia, amen. Jeda Bakashemde Rebekeri, as you type. Amen. Cloni Faradolo, amen, I agree with you. Shendal Main, amen, I agree with you. Whatsoever you're trusting God for, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Somebody trusting God to be healed from COVID-19. Juan Soji, amen, be healed. Somebody trusting God in the name of Jesus. Pamela, amen. Ready, 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 amen, receive it. Somebody trusting God for healing from COVID-19. Be healed. Amen. Priscilla Chetango, Lolifa Bisnat, all of you be healed. I agree with you. Mamba baba 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 baba. I pray for Dimple. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the name of Amen. Amen. As I see you there, all of you, as you're coming up, I agree with you. As the Bible says, whatsoever two or three of us agree on that, Ivan Punya, I agree with you in Jesus' name. The Bible says, if you agree, he will answer. I agree with all of you. Kalami jebele grede vele parano basila. Robo bo 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 bo. Kandolo se prege to la vika tu la bishkerema. Lo se prege di kalaba. As you say, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pa! Glory be to God. Praise ye the Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And all of you with me here, God bless you. Komla and Avanita, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Jora Suje, I agree with you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Rajan, receive yours. Miracle Suje in Jesus' name. I am agreeing with you as I see your name and I call it out. You are blessed, Subia. And this week, Subia, Pamela, is your week of testimony. Amen. Tilda, healing upon you. Receive your healing, Tilda. This is your full week of manifestation, save the Lord. Oh, God is pouring the spirit of prophecy upon me now. Mama, 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 Eugene, this week, you are going into a huge testimony, Eugene Sussman, and your husband, frankly. I see a breakthrough around you all. Sylvia, just begin to dance around your house now because in the midst of this confusion, your breakthrough has come. Ivan, shout hallelujah. It's time to praise the Lord. God is with you, Kim. The Lord said, I'm not silent. I'm going to come true for you. Oh, Lynette, just worship the Lord as never before, Brother Tulsi. Thank you. God bless you. I agree with you for Tilda's perfection of healing. Glory be to God. Oh, manifestation. Anisha Pravda, I agree with you for full prosperity for all your children. I release that in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Believe in the Lord thy God and thou shalt be established. Believe in his prophet and thou shalt prosper. Thank you, Lord. Receive this spirit through. For in Jesus' name, I pray all of you. Amen and amen. Lynn Clado, you are blessed. Power! Deshni Daya. Power! You are blessed. I just feel led to prophesy upon you all. Receive breakthrough this week. Shall be a week of joy and laughter. Shall be a week of testimony in your life all. Shall be a week of tremendous healing and breakthrough. This week you all shall experience laughter and joy. It shall be a week of dancing. A week of laughter. I stand as a prophet and I make a declaration all upon you. And I say receive it all in the name of Jesus. Glory! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. You are all blessed in Jesus' name. Remember the three gate, the, the sheep, the fish, the valley gate. God bless you all. Next week, same time Sunday, I will be with you. Don't forget to press that follow button on your screen so that whenever I'm on the air, you'll be the first to notify so you can follow us. God bless you. Press it now and follow Jesus House Ministry. you bless. blessed. And don't forget to touch the notification button so that you can be notified all time that I'm about to start the word. God bless you. And do the work of an evangelist, all of you. Immediately share this powerful sermon. Share it to as many as possible. Share it and be a good sharer. By doing that, you have also preached the gospel to people in your contact. God bless you for doing this. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Rabatuske le mezzanto lo zika satia la kashika papaya. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you for doing all that. And today, I just want to say to us that uh, on Tuesday, I will be here again to share the word of God with you. So God bless you as you stay on Tuesday to receive the word. You are blessed in Jesus' name. And the absence of any other announcement, I just want us to do our tithe and our offering. This ministry, God has blessed us and he will continue to bless us to take the gospel. All of you who have partnered with this ministry, 
I prophesy and every week I see your blessings, I see your seed, I see your donation, I see your tithe, I see your offering. May the Lord increase you and you want to partner with us today. I prophesy and as I bless you, as you go on the screen now and say Jesus House Ministries Durban, you'll find our banking details including our, our PayPal, and you can do your donation via this medium electronically right now and the Lord will bless you. Yesterday, somebody phoned this ministry from America and he said, man of God, the Lord have just laid upon my heart to sow a seed to Jesus house ministry. And I said, the Lord increase you and bless you as you do this. So there is no seed you sow that will go unrewarded. For the kingdom of God. I stand here today to speak to you all. As you do your morning Sunday service offering. Now. As you take your phone. Our banking details arrive there. And do it now. Thank you for doing it. I bless you. And I ask for special open door. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. And don't forget people of God. To phone me for counseling. And for prayer. Uh, our telephone line are also on the screen. Jesus House Ministry, Dublin. God bless you for doing that. And I'll see you again soon on Tuesday. Now, can we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen.